the question then becomes, all this, was there negligence involved here as well? Not in the lighting of the fire. I'm not talking about arson. I've seen those questions. I have nothing to offer you. I've seen nothing to suggest that these wildfires were anything but uh, mismanaged natural situations. Could it have been prevented? And it is not just the fire spreading, but the devastation to people, especially the human cost. Did they screw up letting people know? Let's bring in Hawaii State Senator Angus McKelvey. He's in Maui. Uh, connection may be a little spotty, uh, but we'll take what we can get. Senator, can you hear me? Can you see me? Aloha, sir. Yes, I can. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. All right. Give me a quick sense of any urgencies that have arisen uh, that people need to know about. Uh, the urgencies are happening every day. I mean, it's been chaos, <clears throat> it's pretty much nonstop chaos. We had more chaos today with the placard program that tried to roll out. Uh, on one side, where all the residents are, where you know their residents, they didn't have enough people to give it out. There was no crowd control at all, and it got out of hand quickly. And meanwhile, they had placards being distributed on the other side of the island and not checking if people were residents. And now all of a sudden, you had all these people getting placards and coming in to take supplies at the relief stations for themselves, visitors coming in and taking supplies, and they had to shut down the placard program. So now we don't have access for the residents to get in and out and do self-supplying. And quite frankly, that has been the lifeline keeping the community alive, has been the community rallying to try to take care of itself because of the breakdown and the chaos that's occurred since then and it's still ongoing. So a placard program is kind of a voucher system that allows people who are affected and are residents to get the supplies first? Yeah, no, it basically is a placard program allows people who are residents to come in and out of the area because of the fear of the looting and other things that have gone on and the lack of the ability to respond to it uh, by law enforcement guard. And that's a whole nother com conversation right there. But the placard was meant to let residents get in and out so that we could sell supplies, so they can access the money to things like that because the road is closed and everything's destroyed in that area pretty much. And comms is still really terrible, and that's crippling the relief effort, cr crippling communication. Uh, and also, too, and is the fact is we don't seem to get meaningful engagement um, unless it's through the help of our colleagues and others from the top-tier people to us, the local electeds who were actually in the ground, on the streets, in the parks, with all of these community groups in our text messaging, coordinating with them, and they're looking to us. They're like, what's going on? What's with this? What's with that? And we don't know. And we're trying to tell them we don't know. And they're getting frustrated. And they're getting angry about the fact that it appears that us and the community are being kept out of the loop on a lot of things. And it's How adding much the frustration, of it? I guess, in the anger right now in the community because it appears that things are happening in other places, other islands, and at 30,000 feet that is affecting us. And meanwhile, what we need – what we know to be the case isn't getting up. So that's what's happening right now. But, you know, we're just basically soldiering on. We're behind us strong, and we're going to continue to work together, uh, even if it means that we're just going to have to try to just take control of the community of things to try to, to see if essentials can get to the people who need them right now. I mean, look, as you probably know, Senator, it is not unusual for communities to have to take the lead uh, in their own rescue, and they have to bond together. and, and um, you know, your hope for the best that you can get from the federal uh, agency. You have uh, hundreds of FEMA people on the ground there. They're trying to get more people there. I get that you're frustrated by that side of the response. Uh, I know it's a little early, but this is really the only moment we'll have to talk about it because people will forget when there's the next disaster. Uh, there's a lot being made about whether or not the sirens, uh, that the warning sirens were activated and people heard it. It seems that they weren't. But is that, that really, that is, but is that really, is that really it, the main measure? You know, they said they were putting out warnings on cell phones and email, that they were warning for days in advance. Do you really believe that this was a case of being caught off guard? Well, no, what went out were what they call red flag warnings. And those are common. You know, the wind is a high wind condition. It's very dry and arid. There's the chance of increased brush fires, uh, which have occurred. Uh, but when something like this basically steamrolls to this level there should have been immediately been text messaging sent out there should have the sirens should have blown i i didn't hear the any sirens i didn't get any sms some people claim that they did but most people didn't 
Uh, you know, we seem to have gotten an SMS when there was an alleged ballistic missile coming our way, but yet we can't seem to get an SMS when it matters the most. And that is one of those breakdowns that we need to look at and hold, hold there's got to be accountability. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.